There you go. The moment of truth. Smoking popes are in the car. I've got two caterers in my car. I've got Eli Caterer and Josh yeah. Caterer. Yeah. Hello. Uh, it's Car Con Carney live Hi. in the parking lot of 350 Fest mm-hmm. in Tinley Park. Uh, this podcast, this Facebook live stream, uh, sponsored by Boost Mobile. Neither of you are comfortable having the mics clamped down. You have to hold them. Well, I would have to mm. lean out of the shot. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> you got to get in the shot. I feel like, you know, visually it's better this way. It's Car Con Carney. Let's eat in the car. It's Car Con Carney. So glad that Eli is here. Uh, Josh has been on Carcon Carne a bunch, but it's always been him. There, there's been nary a trace of another smoking popa on those appearances. So nary, mm-hmm. nary a trace. <laughs> so I'm so glad. Right. Uh, well, that- these guys were able to rework the contract uh, to allow them to make appearances along with me. Yeah, my lawyer finally worked it out with uh, Josh's lawyer. Perfect. So yeah, we're we're good now. So I still can't look him in the eye, but I, I want Josh to explain what happened today at 350 Fest. Um, he and I first caught a glimpse of each other walking up the driveway uh-huh. toward the, uh, I guess, the load-in area. Josh, can you explain what happened? Uh, yes, as we approached each other, uh, you extended your hand, uh, which I took, and then we leaned in for what. I think is described as a bro hug. I think it was a bro hug. You're hugging, but you have the protective hand shake in between as a buffer. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, but in this case, <laughs> we uh, are to you, and I feel this was this was coming from you because I was ready for the full lean in. But we're, I sensed we're huggers, a, the caterers. I, you are. I, I yeah. sensed a reticence on your part. And you, you held your torso so that there was like a couple inches in between so that we appeared to be hugging. And there was even a, a reach around back slap, <laughs> but no torso contact. Look, <laughs> I have nothing but genuine heartfelt emotion for you. I just, I'm not good at the hugging thing. Um, Some people aren't. I, I don't take it personally, James. Well, let, well, let's take it one step further. Josh and I walk into the venue, and there's Eli setting up the Pope's merch table. We go for a hug. The same damn thing happened. Well, I try to, you know, I I try to read the other person, (laughs) you know, uh, uh, some comfort level with the full hug or bro hug, whatever you want to call it. You know, so I I was following your lead, James. I I appreciate it. But here's the thing. Like, I'm I'm not great at hugging. I also am terrible at the handshake thing. Like I've gone in to, to shake people's hands and they do, they maneuver it. It's, it's like a hand ballet they do where they, you know, they, they twist the hand around, they, they do pirouette. I don't know how to do those things. <laughs> like even, I mentioned that to you and you went in for the fist bump. On the surface, perfectly valid so, greeting. But I never know if you just so it's, bump and So you're pull saying away. that it's mostly... Uh confusion yes. about what's being expected of you. Right. There are that, no rules. That keeps you from participating. It's not like some childhood trauma that makes you un, <laughs> unwilling to enter into physical contact with other people. <laughs> that's, that's, that's correct. It's like, don't touch my torso. I have a thing about it. So the fist bump on its own, I get. But then do you, do you make it explode afterward? What if someone explodes and you don't explode? What, I don't, would, what would Bootsy Collins do? What would Bootsy Collins do? That's a fine way to look it's at things. It's always a good question to mm-hmm. ask yourself is what would Bootsy do? Um, I don't know. Text him. First of all, we're all severely underdressed mm-hmm. as far yes. as Bootsy's world. <laughs> as far as the, the uh, regular world, that's always true with there's me. There's no glitter or you know stars involved. Uh-huh. Oh, he'd be wearing shoes, that, even though it's shoes. about 105 degrees out here today. I, yeah. You may notice when you first walked out to the car, I was facing the other direction. My phone was overheating. So I had to oh. spin it around so that we could actually keep doing the Facebook right, Live. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it would just explode. Whew. So here we are. Um, <laughs> wouldn't want that. So, Eli, what you missed in the past several times I talked to Josh, I say it every time. What about making smoking, t- smoking popes a full-time concern again? Uh... You're suggesting we do the band more. Yeah. Yeah. I, You've I, been suggesting this for years. And you Josh's, Josh's wife loves it. 
think she loves whatever she loves. Oh, she's idea. a huge fan of you. Yes, all the all of the wives and significant others are like, we love James. <laughs> Wait, right. you make it sound like I'm trouble. <laughs> Don't doesn't that appeal to you a little bit? To be trouble, James. That's not who I to am. To be considered a bad influence, <laughs> Eli. That is not my brand. That is off brand for JVO. Here's your chance, man. <laughs> That's not true. I've, I've eaten your sandwich. That's a dangerous sandwich. <laughs> I will eat your sandwich. <laughs> that thing is nothing but trouble. Uh, so, so what about it? I mean, yeah, this, we're actually we're heeding your uh, advice uh, encouragement yeah, we're, uh, we're moving in that direction is it kind of like am i nick fury and you're the avengers and i've assembled you <laughs> yeah the, you planted the seeds they're they're uh you know mm-hmm. what do you call that sprouting it's sprouting that's yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm no botanist we have a new album coming out we have completed new a new album it's coming out in october um of and go ahead new material I believe nine originals and one cover song. Yes. Um, but it's our first uh, full-length studio album with the original lineup, back with Mike, Mike back yeah. in the band. Mike, Since whose last name I mispronounced for probably 15 years. Felumly. Felumly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The last time we recorded an album with him was 1998. Man. Party's over, so it's been 20 years. And so when this album comes out... Um, we're going to ramp up the touring, and, and uh, I don't know that it's going to be full-time, as in, I think if it's if you're a full-time touring band, you're playing like 200-plus mm-hmm. dates a year. Um, and I don't, I don't know if we're going to quite get there. But, but, you're, but you're, you're getting deeper into it. Yeah. But we're doing it more incrementally. Uh, I mean... We were practically on hiatus, really, Mm -hmm. before Mike rejoined the band, and then we've kind of been doing more. Yeah. You know, it's been an ebb and a flow. But I think uh, it's been... uh, Did I tell you, maybe on a previous uh, appearance on this podcast... Previously on Carcon Carne. I I spoke about this principle of the seven years. Mm -hmm. Did I bring this up before? I I don't know if it was on the podcast or when we had lunch. I don't remember. Okay. So... I heard this interview with uh, Iggy Pop. I think he was, he was on Fresh Air. And he was talking about how he noticed that his career tended to go in seven-year cycles. And it wasn't on purpose. But when he looked back, you know, he would be sort of doing one thing for seven years. And then at the end of that period, just something would shift. And he would have to, you know, change bands or change his approach to something. And, uh, and then I started th- thinking about it and I realized that that was true of our career um you know we when we broke up we were broken up for seven years then we got back together and we were um a a really functional touring band for about seven years uh and then we decided to stop touring in 2012 yeah that would have been a full seven years that's right yeah and then um when we actually get the touring machine back up and running, it's going to be 2019 by the time that is is really going, which will have been seven years since we made the decision to stop. It's kind of freaky. Right. And we didn't orchestrate it that way on purpose, but it's just it's just the, the way of things. We're on the Iggy Pop cycle. Not mm-hmm. a bad cycle to be on. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, we're, really. so, yeah. we're so plugged into his wavelength. We just love Iggy so much. I, I, I need to be on the Iggy Pop diet. I, I need to be on that... <laughs> Like all sinew and and rock hard body diet that Iggy pops on. It's probably not a healthy diet he's on. I'm just saying, he looks well, I fit. Th- I feel like he's been healthier in more recent years in his yeah. life. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's what seventy in his early seventies. Yeah, he still takes the stage with his shirt off. <laughs> still stage dives. Yeah. as far as I know. Are we supposed to acknowledge the folks? Uh yes. All right. So let's uh, see. Uh, Stephanie, uh, that looks like a, uh, my eyesight is terrible. Is that a crying emoji or is that a happy emoji? I think it's, it's ha- so happy. It's I'm happy with so tears. Ha- yeah, and uh, and Silva says hi. Hi, hi, Silva. Hi, Silva. Um, see, this is good. This, this is social media one on one. They say acknowledge the people who are watching. Uh-huh. Right, I've, I see <laughs> so, people do that sometimes. Bring them in. Yeah, come on in. Come on, <laughs> um, be part they, of the, acknowledge the audience. Uh, we didn't start doing that until about eighteen here, years so. into the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, 
there was some isolationist behavior, perhaps the first <laughs> right. first time around. The Pope's yeah. run an island. I mean, you, know, you do the best you can. I mean, you, know. you grow up. Yeah, you get better. We all we all mature. We all think smarter and behave smarter. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about new music because out of nowhere, you dropped a new song last week. I mean, I yeah. I, I wasn't expecting well, it. We released a single. Uh, you know, as as an official release that you can purchase online, and the, that song is called "Little Lump of Coal," mm-hmm. and we wanted to release, we wanted that to be purchasable because we wanted to donate the proceeds from that single to uh, an organization called the Natural Resources Defense Council because the song was written as a kind of a response to the Trump administration's war on the environment, and so we wanted to do something we wanted to join in that fight and allow other people to do the same but then like just yesterday another single another song from the new album was released through brooklyn vegan Mm -hmm. um but that's just a streaming thing but like the new stuff is trickling out there into the universe Uh, if you want to have it trickle my way so i can play it on the radio that'd be amazing (laughs) all right I'll, I'll wanna, send you. Want to loop me into that? That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Thanks for sending me the reissue of Destination Failure. But if you want to give me some new stuff, that'd be awesome too. Yeah, we mustn't forget about the radio. See, thank you. Uh, and I should say, Destination Failure, one of my favorite albums ever. Uh, the reissue on vinyl. I still play that all the time. It's so cool to have that on record. Oh, it really is. It's the. Uh, it took us a long time to get that together, so it feels good. Yeah, it's it- hefty and it's double it's LP. A substantive package. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, we put lead in the packaging so that it weighs a little bit more. <laughs> right, As don't we, eat it, but it, it feels good. So, all right, so the the uh, little lump of coal, uh, raising money for charity. New songs on the way. Did you record with Mike? Did you do it in the rock room, or did you find a special place? We recorded with our friend Ruben Baird at the uh, Chicago Sound Lab in Summit, Illinois. If but you then, like if you like the sandwich, you'll love his audio production. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. But then this, uh, we sent the stuff to be mixed to another guy named Jamie Wolford, and he did a nice job of, you know, putting some sprinkles on top. Mm-hmm. Reuben, right. though, Reuben Baird, the, that engineered the album, is also just for these few shows that we're doing with the Descendants. Reuben is playing bass with us. So Matt is where? Matt is recovering. He's on the mend. From a uh, a minor uh, surgical procedure. Is he all right? Yeah, he's, he's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> he's fine. The, the mere fact that you laughed when I asked that tells me he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's good. He went home the day, you know, that he didn't even have to stay overnight, so he's fine. It's a gallbladder thing. Uh, that's no fun. Yeah, I had to get that thing taken yeah, out. Yeah, he was pretty bummed he had to miss the shows with one of the he was, uh, legend, here's, most legendary Here's Matt. He's so, he's so committed to the band and to his craft that he was still planning on doing the shows even though it was it's been like a a, what a week since he had the couple weeks i think maybe two weeks almost two weeks and because they told him he wasn't supposed to lift anything heavier (laughs) heavier than 20 pounds and i think it was less than that 10 or 15 right and so he told us he was like okay guys when we do these descendant shows uh, somebody's gonna have to Put my base on me. Nope. <laughs> and we were like, it seems like a bad idea. Okay, yeah. dude, we'll do that. But then his doctor eventually told him not to actually go on the tour. Suddenly, he's like the James Brown of the Smoking Popes. <laughs> right. He is the James Brown of the Smoking Popes. Oh, he totally is. He's the hardest <laughs> he working been, man in show business. He's been for years. You see that air that he's catching at our shows, man. He, yeah. he's he's way up there. Um, so, so you're on the. I didn't realize you were. Uh, doing multiple dates with the descendants so you're going to indianapolis after this? oh yeah this That's show I, it's its own thing right it's yeah. 350 fest but but it's for us it's actually part of a four show mini tour that we're doing opening for the uh, descendants how great is that it's amazing so all right when you guys were growing up in the, in the mid early 80s i mean were you spinning milo goes to college was that was that a young caterer favorite we, I, I didn't get into the descendants until we met mike fellamly yeah, uh, and then he was into him. He and was into them and all. And we were actually we got more into all even yeah. than we were into the descendants. But uh, for most people, I think it goes the other way. There's yeah. like they love the descendants, and all is sort of like a peripheral thing. But mm-hmm. um, 
What's oh. that album we used to listen to that has minute? That's Percolator. For a minute. Yeah, Percolator. The, it's the Scott Reynolds all stuff. Um, yeah, we listen to that album all so Roy's much. All Roy's Revenge, All Roy Saves, Percolator. Those were kind of the those were the ones we listened to a lot. Yeah, we loved that, and then sort of Paul worked Riker. our way back to the uh, the Descendants. Yeah, I love discovering bands that it, are discoveries at all bands that have been around for a while, but I'm late to. Yeah, because then you could just go digging back in the catalog, like, oh my gosh, how did I miss all this? Mm-hmm. That, that's the best. Like, yeah. if you discover a new band, that's great. You're waiting for more. But old bands, like, oh, man, <laughs> there's a treasure trove of stuff to dive into here. Yeah, and sometimes when you make a discovery like that and you have an entire body of work to go through, you you have to comb through a bunch of sort of questionable stuff to get to the, the gems that are True enough. hidden in there. But in the case of the Descendants' career, it's, it's all consistently good. Like, the album that they just put out. The and, uh, Spastica. Yeah, Hyper... Hyper caffeinated. I mean, that one's a couple of spasms. Yeah, it's 2016. They just right. put out that three song EP. Right. But then, then now, a few years before that, they put out one called Cool to Be You. And like uh, the quality of songs uh, so is just so consistent. And they, they, they sprinkle those songs into their set with the old stuff, and it all feels uh, like present and relevant. And uh, yeah. the, the, it's, you know, it's great. It's rare. It's yeah, a rare thing. For sure. All right, so tonight, Smoking Popes are playing 350 Fest here in Tinley Park. The setup here is pretty darn cool. I mean, I never would have imagined in my wildest dreams that something could look like this in Tinley Park. I mean, it's mm-hmm. they've got beer tents. They've got the soothsayer hot sauce, sauce table. They've got professional wrestling in the middle of the floor, which I've always wanted to see wrestling and the Smoking Popes simultaneously. <laughs> dreams come true. They, they can come true. You're uh, a wrestling fan, aren't you, James? Fan is a tricky word. I appreciate it. I grew up with it. My 16-year-old son still enjoys it. Mm-hmm. So, I, do you go to like to this like I, the smaller wrestling events in the I, city? Do you know do. about that scene, Eli? I have been to Berwyn Championship Wrestling on more than one occasion. Nice. I mean, here's perspective. It's so indie. They don't even have ambitions beyond Berwyn. The name of the wrestling company is Berwyn <laughs> Championship Wrestling. Like some people will call it like. International pro wrestling or whatever. <laughs> right. No, we are Berwyn. We are locked yeah. to this this parcel of land. This is who we yeah. are. That's about as indie as it gets. Oh, definitely. That's... So, in answer to your question, yeah, I have some friends that are really into like the smaller kind of indie wrestling scene, and and uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of like the punk scene. There mm-hmm. are parallels between wrestling and music, and I see them all the time, especially at that level. I mean, it's totally DIY, and you're building your brand and you're schlepping your stuff from venue to venue and, yeah. and trying are, to win people over. There are costumes involved. There are co- Oh, those early days with you guys in costume. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll never forget the flared pants. I mean, the wigs, amazing. Yeah. You've come the a long onesies. way. onesies. Yeah. Well, that, that whole glam period you went through was just, it was unforg- It was magical. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad, yes. glad that it's captured forever on Pitchfork. Um, mm. So tonight, 350 Fest, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, Smoking Popes are performing yes, we are. on stage. Do this one for Matt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're He's doing with them us. all for Matt. <laughs> He's with us This one's spirit. for you, Matt Caterer. Um, <laughs> you guys are great. And then uh, you're following Descendants over to Indianapolis. And then uh-huh. new album on the way. Yes. In October or October, October. 12th. Amazing. <laughs> and then uh, as far as your next Chicago gig, for people who are listening to the podcast and Miss 350, can you say it? Uh, I don't think that's totally locked in yet. Uh, I don't think. But there's probably a big gig coming up. I would guess. There, there always. We is. may very well have a big, awesome show coming up. <laughs> it's, it's quite it's very possible. possible. It's very possible that there's, there's some amazing right there. bands Stay that we tuned. may be performing with. Stay tuned, world. In the near future. <laughs> Great. I, allegedly. 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 Uh, I love you guys. You know that. Uh, thank you for doing this. Love you too, James. Love Looking too, forward James. to seeing you perform. Even if you time. won't hug us directly. <laughs> we won't take that we'll, to mean that you don't love we'll us. Never let Understand that go. it's not about you. It's about me. Right. It's just I'm, I'm awkward. I, I don't know. I'm awkward. Okay. Well, well, we'll work on it. We'll get out of the car and just hug each other. Yes. Just hold yeah. each other for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I came to Tinley Park to snuggle and... <laughs> 
That is exactly what's going to happen when this recording is, there is over. Is there enough room to spoon back there? I don't. I'm we'll not make sure. room. You can okay. scoot that seat up. We'll get in the van. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we will. <laughs> On that note, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.